uh, series of lectures on marine hydrodynamics. Today we have the twelfth lecture, and we will talk about uh, conformal mapping and some of its application in fluid flow problems, particularly in two dimensional flow problems. As we have seen in our previous classes, that large number of problems can be handled by using the theory of complex function and its various characteristics. There is one of the one of the very important transformation, what is called the conformal mapping. Here, basically, the angle is preserved in this uh, mapping. And let us see what exactly it is. We can work out few examples to understand what exactly the conformal mapping is, and then we will apply the same concept to see how the conformal mapping can be used to solve fluid flow problems. In this case, what because it is a the name itself is called a conformal mapping, means that means we must be having two planes in the complex plane. And in these two planes, that means as I had told in my last class, that uh, when we have a problem, it may be difficult to solve in a particular plane. But if we can transform this function to another plane, then the problems will be simplified by a suitable transformation. We will transform, and then the we will solve the problem in the new plane. And after solving the problem in the new plane, in a simplified manner again we will come back to my our original plane and then the problems becomes much simpler and easy. So, let us see through an example what this conformal mapping is. So, suppose I will take one example because today we are talking about conformal mapping. What exactly it is? So, this is a function f from u to c and u is an open subset it is an open subset of the complex plane complex plane we say that it is conform if is the mapping is called conformal if and only if it is holomorphic and its derivative is continuous everywhere, is everywhere non zero, is everywhere non zero on u it is a very basically it is a mathematical technique it is often known as mathematical technique And it is used to convert one mathematical problem into another. So, here suppose I will take one example. Let us take one example. Suppose I say if z is equal to w is equal to z bar. So, I have the plane, this is the z plane, and if I have a point P, I will say I have a point P which is x y, then this point it can be represented in a polar coordinate f z z is equal to r e to the power i theta 
if I say I have another plane, this is the z plane, let me call this is the zeta plane. The zeta plane, suppose I say zeta is equal to z bar, which implies the type I say zeta plane has i plus i eta that is called r e to the power minus i theta. So, in the new plane, so what we do in the new plane zeta plane z bar is defined and this for each point if you look at this, this is nothing but minus theta. So, that means here the angle is it is a mirror image of this angle theta and it is here. So, that means here we are writing this is our zeta plane. In the zeta plane every point is represented by so zeta is nothing but z bar. So, basically we see that here the angle is just there is a mirror image of this angle theta. So, that is what we see here and in other words we can also if you call it x y then this point can be q minus x y. So, in the z plane when we say f z is z bar that means if I say zeta is z bar then z plus i eta is r to the power minus i theta. So, basically what we are doing we are representing each point here in the x plane we have a point we have angle the corresponding angle is nothing but here it is if it is theta here here the corresponding angle a point here is treated as as if it is minus theta. So, that is what I will come to another example for better clarity about the problem. Now, suppose I will say another example I will take because let us work out few examples to clarify what exactly it is. If I say w z is equal to z, z square and if I write w is equal to rho e to the power i phi and I have z is equal to r e to the power i theta. So, then what will happen? Because we will have rho e to the power i phi, this is nothing but z square, z is r square e to the power 2 i theta and which implies my rho is equal to r square, my phi is equal to 2 theta, which show that uh, distance from the origin if I have a if I have this is my z plane and this is I say this is my zeta plane this is my zeta plane then any point here this is represented by if I call it this is a point p and this is a point q this is rho rho theta and this is p r theta then we have seen that if this angle is theta and in this place this angle is phi then we have seen that rho is equal to r square phi is equal to 2 theta. So, that means if we look at this plane that means as if we are thinking of the distance square from the origin and the angle is twice that of the angle here. So, for each angle here we can get an angle here and for each point here we will have a point here. So, that is why now with this I will if I put the same thing the Cartesian coordinate my z will be x plus i y and w is equal to phi plus i psi if I put it then my or even if I call it as a j plus i eta then we have already we know that if j is equal to constant is equal to a then and what is my j plus i eta my j is equal to constant a and that is nothing but which implies x square minus y square is equal to constant is equal to a. Further if I say my eta is equal to constant and that I say b which is b say then I will get 2 x y is equal to b. So, 
so this is the so this is in the zeta plane so for each point as i mean to say for each point here so if i have any point zeta in this plane think of any point zeta in this plane and it has a corresponding x y point here And here it is simple because x square minus y square is equal to a if it is a constant that means a line if I assume that this is a constant that means a point if j is a constant and uh, again eta is a constant that means if j is a constant and that will correspond it will give me a line in the plane and that is nothing but here it is x square minus y square. On the other hand if I say b is a constant 2 x y is b and then accordingly that is nothing but it will represent here p. So, this is what exactly. So, now I will in fact we will go to a better example to have a look at what exactly is happening. How will use this concept to transform various problems. Suppose I look at my w z is equal to u zeta and that is nothing but u j plus i eta. So, my j zeta is equal to i plus i eta. So, let if I say if I put it that my zeta is equal to z to the power half. So, that means I am looking at my w z is equal to z to the power u sorry u z to the power half this complex this is a this is my w z and I have taken my zeta is z to the power half. So, in the process w z can be written as u zeta. So, it is a j this function and this is a much simpler to handle than this function. Now, if you look at this one let us see what happen. Suppose, what will happen when eta is equal to b to the power half. If eta is b to the power half. So, from here zeta is z to the power half. So, we have before that let us see we have already zeta is equal to z to the power half which implies our zeta square is x plus i y because that is z and that means again zeta is i plus i eta. If I put i plus i eta i square minus zeta square plus 2 y i eta equal to x plus i y and once this is this that means I get x is equal to x square minus x is equal to j square minus eta square and my y is equal to 2 j eta. So, which implies which implies my y square is equal to 4 j square eta square. So, I will put it as 4 eta square and if I put j square is equal to x plus eta square. And now, if I say substitute eta is equal to b to the power half which implies my y is equal to 4 eta is b to the power half. So, it will be b into x plus b. So, that means I have a eta is equal to b is a half it is a line along the if this is the line eta is equal to b to the power half in the eta plane and that will in the x y plane that will represent a parabola and this parabola is y square is sorry this is y square y square is 4 b x plus b. So, here minus b 0 minus b comma 0. Similarly, if I look at another thing suppose I say eta is equal to a to the power half then my from it is obvious from here then y square will be 4 a into x plus a. So, if I take another line here 
eta is equal to a to the power half. Then here also there will be a line here. This is a parabola here. So that means uh, if I say that the flow along this will be the same as along the flow along this between these two parabolas, and we call it a paraboloid. So that means, and this is very easy in the new plane, zeta plane. This is uh, a kind of uniform flow, whereas between the two, if I say eta is equal to constant and eta is equal to both are constant, then I can always say that flow between the two parallel lines. On the other hand, the same will represent in the x y plane, that means in the z plane, this will represent as if flow between a part 2 between a paraboloid. Thus, the straight lines in the zeta plane will correspond to a parabola in the z plane. Now, if you look at this another ang another point of view, suppose I say z is equal to r e to the power i theta, then we have w if I just consider this as a complex potential that is called phi plus i psi and again we can call it we know that it is u z to the power half and that is nothing but u r to the power half e to the power i theta by 2 where z is equal to we have taken z is equal to r e to the power i theta and once this is there then we will get from this phi is equal to r to the power half cos theta by 2 and uh, psi is equal to r to the power half sin theta by 2 and which else if psi is equal to constant gives me the streamline these are the streamlines then that means it is same as telling r to the power half sin theta by 2 is equal to constant and this constant if I call this as a c then we have r to the power half is c by sin theta by 2 and that is nothing but which implies r is equal to c square by sin square theta by 2 and this is which can be written as which is can be written as 2 c square by 1 minus cos cos theta. So, from this we can get 2 c square is equal to r into 1 minus cos theta which implies 2 c square this is equal to r minus r cos theta. which implies r is 2 c square is equal to r is x square plus y square to the power half minus y minus x r cos theta x little algebra, but it is quite interesting. So, from which we can easily get y square is equal to or c square into c square plus x because we have taken psi is equal to constant has given us the streamlines so c is equal to constant so this is again gives us a streamline this is the equation of streamline so that's why this can represent a flow now if i take c is equal to b to the power half what we have seen is equal to y square is equal to 4 b into x plus b. So, if I what it says that if I consider w is a z to the power half which I have used two lines the two lines in the zeta plane corresponds to two paraboloid in the x y plane. Now, we see that if this 
two lines can be considered as two these constants can be considered as streamline then in the z plane this can be again considered as streamlines and their parabolas. Now, what is the speed in this case? If you look at the speed this q we all know now we know that phi is equal to u r to the power half cos theta by 2 and that gives me q square a del phi by del r scale plus 1 by r del phi by del theta square and that is nothing but 1 by 2 u r to the power minus half cos theta by 2 square plus 1 by r u r to the power minus half sin theta by 2 and this again gives us 1 by 4 this will give us u square u square r to the power minus 1 into this is uh, u r square this will give us del phi by del theta. So, this will give us cos square theta by 2 plus sin square theta by 2 and that will give me u square by 4 r sorry u square by 4 r which implies q is equal to 1 by 2 u into r to the power minus half. Because we have del phi by del theta, yeah, this will be give us a half 1 by 2 times 1 by 2 times because sin theta by 2 del phi by del theta. 1 by 2 into cos theta ok. So, this is fine. So, we got q is equal to this once we know the speed then what will happen hence because we are looking at a parabola on r is equal to a our q will be 1 by 2 u a to the power minus half. Now, if I want to calculate what is the pressure distribution on the parabola So, I have to use the one knowledge equation and that gives me p by rho plus u square by 2 is equal to constant a constant and that constant I call it k. So, which gives me p equal to rho times k minus q square by 2 and if I just say q is equal to on the line q is on the parabola q is equal to constant if on r is equal to a then I can always get rho k minus q square by 2 q square by 2 and this will give us u by that is 4 plus 2 80. So, if I know that the pressure at the point A is known then that always I can get the. So, if this is the this is a constant that is the pressure at the point on the parabola this is P at R is equal to A.
and if this is then so that means on the circle merged r is nothing but the circle r is equal to a imply merged is equal to a that means on a circle merged a p becomes this now so this i can always call this this if the pressure is same everywhere on a curve on a circle along any streamline in the pressure that means it shows that pressure along this streamline because this itself is showing me a streamline so along the streamline if p by rho p is constant since p is constant this you got this value is constant and once this is constant so p is constant which implies p is iso this is a uh, the circle implies the line merged is equal to a or isopressor curve. Now further, suppose I know the pressure at infinity, let pi be the pressure at infinity. apply the pressure at infinity then from this uh, we have seen that our the pressure at infinity is uh, the velocity at infinity q at is 0. So, which implies p by rho plus and my q is half of u square by 2 2 r to the power half rather 2 r sorry this is square and this is equal to pi by rho pi by rho because at infinity the pressure is the q is 0 which implies my p can be written as pi plus rho u square by 8 r. But there, there will be a minus sign pi minus this is this this is my p sorry. So, at any point the pressure is this. Now, what will be p minimum? Suppose minimum of R is B, so which implies P minimum P infinity minus rho u square by 8B. And if P minimum is this, and if this quantity is 0, if I say P minimum is 0, implies p infinity is rho u square by 8 p which implies in terms of the p minimum I will get my p p infinity means here I have pi ok I will call it p infinity where I will say p infinity is nothing but pi and then if p infinity is this that means pi is this so, I will get p is equal to rho u square by 8 into 1 by b minus 1 by r. So, if at any point merged is r is equal to a, so if I have a circle which implies on merged is equal to r, my pressure will give me p will be rho u square by 8 into 1 by b minus 1 by a. So, this is the pressure in terms of if I know the minimum pressure then I can always get if my I get minimum pressure then always I can get at any point mod z is equal to r is because my pressure. Now, this example. So, what here we have used? We have transformed this plane because uh, see it is on a paraboloid and but we have not done the algebra we have done it here on a paraboloid, but we have mainly 
done it by considering that the streamlines are nothing but straight lines. Now, I will go to another example. Suppose, how we will get a transformation of a source. Suppose, I say my zeta is z to the power 1 by n. If zeta is z to the power 1 by n, zeta is z to the power 1 by n. Then what will happen? Suppose I say z is r u to the power i theta. My, my zeta, I call it r u to the power i phi. Then from this, we can easily get that zeta is because uh, in terms of z, this is uh, z to the power 1 by n and which implies r e to the power i phi is this becomes r to the power 1 by n into e to the power i into theta by n, which gives me. So, if I now, what is happening here? If my angle theta is in the, then what will happen if a theta is equal to 2 pi and that is in the z plane, then my phi will be 2 pi by n that is in the zeta plane. So, that means if I take a point here, this is my z plane. and I consider another this is my zeta plane. Then if I say point here p and I consider another point here, if I consider a circle here, then here I consider the same po another point q, then the corresponding p point will be an angle and that angle is nothing but that is bit 2 pi by n. So, this is just phi. So, I just put it here in the zeta plane. This angle is phi, and that phi is nothing but 2 pi by n. So, for an angle, a circle here, we have a angle here, and that is 2 pi by n, and circle means we are making. So, uh, this emphasizes suppose I look at a source here. So, in the z plane if I have a source, because if I say my w is equal to l n z m log z that means, I have a source in the z plane which gives me my m log r plus i m theta. So, that means, if for a source so, this represents if in the z plane, I have a source of strength m So, because the here the streamlines will be circles, as I say the circles will be the streamlines here. On the other hand, in the zeta plane, in the zeta plane, what will happen to this? We can easily see that. So, 2 pi m is the strength of the source, and then in the zeta plane, the same thing that will be because it will give me 2 pi by n 2 pi into 2 pi by n into m m prime, m prime is the strength, and that gives me because for each 2 pi, the corresponding angle here 2 pi by n, and if the source is your if the source here in the new zeta plane for this uh, source is m prime, then I have 2 pi m is same as 2 pi by n into m prime, so which gives me m prime is because 2 pi 2 pi get cancelled, m prime is n m. So, this is what. So, corresponding as I have already mentioned, so corresponding to a source of strength m here will have a source here whose strength is m prime the m 
m prime will be n m times n times m. Now, with this understanding on few examples on the conformal mapping that means, how we relate one point in a one plane to another point in the another plane one of the very important transformation we will talk about that is called Zukowski transformation. This Zukowski uh, transformation it gives us very it is one of the very simple and important transformation and uh, which was developed by the Russian mathematician Zukowski. And then this transformation says that the, the transformation is zeta is z plus b square by z. If this is the transformation, so I have a point, this is the point in the z plane and each point in the zeta plane will be this is the zeta plane. So, each point z here will have a corresponding point here. Now, we can by using this transformation we can have a point here and then have a respective point here and vice versa. Now, it can be easily seen that what will happen when mod z is turning to infinity. Then my zeta will be z. And once zeta is z, that means at the far field, both zeta plane, any point in the zeta plane is same as the another point in the z plane, but local points locally in the near field, the transformation is the two points, two things are quite different. A point in the z plane, a point in the zeta plane, they are quite different. Now, let us see what is this transformation means. Suppose I take z is a or e to the power i theta a point in the z plane and let me say zeta is equal to j plus i eta. Then what will happen j plus i eta? If I put it using the transformation then I can easily get it or e to the power i theta plus b square by r e to the power i theta and which is nothing but r e to the power i theta plus b square by r into the minus i theta and which gives me r cos theta plus b square by r cos theta plus i times r sin theta minus b square by r sin theta. So, that gives me r plus b square by r into cos theta then plus i times r minus b square by r into sin theta. If I do this then my j I will separate the real and imaginary points my j will be r plus b square by r into cos theta and my eta will be r minus b square by r into sin theta. If I from these two thing I know cos square theta sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 which gives me j square by r plus b square by r square plus eta square by r plus b r minus b square by r square is equal to 1. So, what was now what is this? I have taken a point z is r a to the power i theta that means, I have a circle of radius r I think of a circle, this is if this is the origin, I think of r e to the power i theta any point on the circle on the surface of the circle on the boundary. Now, what is this represents? This represents an ellipse 
So, that means, in the in the zeta plane and this is z plane. In the zeta plane, this is an ellipse, any point, and whereas this distance, if I call this A, that means my A is R plus B square by R and my B, this is my A, my B will be R minus B square by R. So, this is the semi major axis and this we call the semi minor axis. So, we have seen that each point that means we are able to by using this transformation, we are able to map every point on the z plane to a point on the zeta plane. So, we are able to suppose that in the process we are able to map a circle to an ellipse and this is and here the origin of the circle is at the, the center is the origin of the circle. Now, what I will do? I will just make it a very simple way. I will look at it. So, this I can say because of the substitution, I will have j square by a square plus eta square by b square equal to 1. Now, what will happen if r is equal to b? If I say r is equal to b, if r is equal to b, then this becomes my Okay. If r is equal to b, then my j will be here I will put r is equal to b. So, this is b 2 b cos theta and what will be eta? r is equal to b, r is equal to b means eta is 0. So, if that is the case, then what will happen to the corresponding in the, so this will be a line that is j because eta is 0. So, this is a line which will represent j is equal to 2 b cos theta. So, again we are able to see that from a circle we are able to if this is the zeta plane, in the zeta plane from a circle we are again able to come to a line horizontal line. So, if I look at a flow that means any point outside the circle can be related to any point outside this ellipse if I look at the inverse transformation and again we can always see that any point outside the circle can also be related to any point outside this line of finite length which is a 2 b. So, if I look at the inverse transformation what happens that means, in the inverse transformation any point outside the circle can be related to any point outside the ellipse here or any point out the outside the circle can be related to any point outside this plane plate particularly. Now, again let us look at some of the characteristics because I have taken Now, what will happen to my a square minus b square, because a square minus b square will be hot. So, that will give me r plus b square by r square minus r minus b square by r. And that is give me that will give me square and that is uh, this gives me r square minus r square b square by r will be fourth by r fourth. So, it will give me 4 this is 4 into b square by b fourth by r square 4 b fourth by r square. Will it be okay? No, sorry. Sorry, sorry. This will give me r square plus b square by r square plus 2 r into b square by r minus r square minus b square by r whole square, then plus 2 r into b square by r, and that gives me. 4 b square. So, that means, a square minus b square 
and if I call this as c square then that will give me which implies when zeta you can call it z plus my this is b square by z. So, I can call it uh, b square is c square by 4 z square. If I consider this then if a b are the major axis then my c will be the 2 c will give me the focal length because the points will be minus c 0 and uh, G c 0. So, this is the way if I consider this as the transformation then it will represent a b will represent the major and minor axis with c 2 c being the focal length and again then this is one of the things. Now, with this now what will happen let us look at from this zeta I look at the suppose I have been given zeta the transformation zeta in terms of z. Now, I want to get the inverse transformation. What will happen to the inverse transformation? In the inverse transformation, what I have to do? I have to just redo the algebra. It is very interesting actually, sometimes it may look a little complex to do the algebra. Uh, this is c square by 4 z sorry this is 4 z not 4 z square because I have taken b square by z. So, then I will have 4 z square if I call this representation as star. So, from zeta rather I will say we have oh, sorry zeta is equal to z plus zeta is equal to z plus c square by 4 z which implies I will get this is 4 z square 4 z square then minus 4 zeta z minus 4 zeta z plus c square is equal to 0. This is the quadratic equation in z if this is the quadratic in z, what will be z then? Because that will give me the inverse transformation. Then my z will be 1 by 2 in terms of zeta plus minus zeta square minus c square. And here c square is, I have seen my c square is nothing but a square minus b square. And only bracket n. So, now if z is this if I look at only the considering only the positive root positive root in z then our z will be half of zeta plus zeta square minus c square and it can be seen this transformation if I call this star we have seen the earlier transformation that it maps every point on a circle to every point on ellipse then if I look at the inversion it can be checked can be proved that the transformation star represents any point on outside the ellipse to every point outside the circle. Because there earlier we have seen from z to zeta, now we are seeing from zeta to z. So, we can see that every point outside the circle outside the ellipse will map to a point outside. So, this is the zeta plane, this is the z plane this can be easily proved and I am not going to the detail of the proof again.
this can be found in any of the reference book what I have suggested. Now, with this, so this is a very another interesting result that uh, from the Zukowski transformation, we have seen that every point on a ellipse can be obtained from a point on the circle and here we are seeing the reverse that any from a ellipse we can also get a point on a circle. So, to have better understanding on this, we will come to the elliptic coordinate system and there from the elliptic coordinate system, we can see that how these uh, points are related, what exactly the elliptic coordinate system and again we can get it from this uh, transformation, the inverse transformation of the Zukowski transform and after that uh, that will help us because if every point outside an ellipse can relate to a point, can map to a point outside a circle, that means if I have a flow, I have a flow particularly if I think of a flow of a ellipse particularly elliptic cylinder, flow past a elliptic cylinder, I can always relate it to the flow past a circular cylinder. So, that means from a, if I know the result for a elliptic cylinder or a circular cylinder, I can always get the results from a elliptic cylinder because that is obvious because every point outside the ellipse can be related, uh, can be mapped to every point outside the circle. So, that means in a two dimensional flow pattern, if I put a cylinder circular cylinder in the flow, then I can apply the circle theorem to get the uniform flow past a circular cylinder in the same manner by using the same result because uh, by using this transformation, I can always obtain the results on a elliptic cylinder and this is what we will do in our next class. And with this uh, today we will stop this, this transformation, Zukowski transformation or the conformal mapping has uh, will in fact, not only for ellipse, later in the future classes, in the next few classes we will see how more complex transformation, how more complex problems can be solved by using this uh, Zukowski transformation, particularly when it comes a hydrofoil or a aerofoil. There are two types of aerofoil we will consider, one is the symmetric aerofoil, one is the cambered aerofoil. Again, we will see if the, we will see because we have already seen from a point from a point on the circle, we can relate to a point on the line. So, if I have a uniform flow past a line, particularly a finite length, maybe a plate of finite length, then or finite width, then we can always think of a flow past a plate, obtain it from the user result of the flow past a cylinder. So, this will do in the coming few classes. So, this uh, this Zukowski transformation or the conformal mapping has uh, is will be very helpful in solving large number of complex flow problems and uh, we will see in the next few classes how this is helpful in analyzing some of the flow problems. Thank you. Stop here.